what if everything that we did came from right here? That was my mom, Jean. She set the example. She literally invented kindness and forgiveness. And many of the lessons that I took from her, the early ones, were from starter school. A school on Empire Way and Kenyon, which is now known as Martin Luther King Way. One day, at 6.15, long past closing time, she was the lone staff person as the director there, but there were two kids. They continued to push Play-Doh through the Play-Doh press, the kid height table. Repeated request to reach their mother had gone unanswered, and Jean had a choice. Surrender those children to the Seattle Police Department or make a different choice. She put them in the van and she sat at the traffic light, a traffic light that she had fought for, a traffic light that was unsynchronized at the time, and a traffic light that took forever to change to green. The final time that the crosswalk you know how this works, blinked, the light turned green, she pulled the van into the intersection, she turned right for home. It was novel having two extra kids at the dinner table that night, although dinner was an hour late. And my parents sat down after everyone was asleep, including our two new guests on the couch, and decided that this was going to be a one-night affair only. No matter what happened the next day, those kids would be surrendered to the public welfare system if their mother did not show up. Same thing, same clock, next day, here's Jean. Has to make a decision. She had made that promise to my dad that our kitchen table would not need the leaf in it the next day. Two kids sitting on that bench seat in the back of that long brown van, feet dangling, light turns green, she pulls into the intersection. Turn left, keep her promise. Turn right, beg for forgiveness for her outrageous compassion. This is not a father that is short on compassion himself, my father. This is, the, this is the father that had known my mom since she was 14 years old. This was the gene that had brought him three daughters and this only son. This is the gene that put on incredible Halloween parties, Valentine's parties. She put on a hundred birthday parties a year because none of these kids would have a birthday party otherwise. This was the gene that put three extra cups of mozzarella cheese in her lasagna because she knew those kids would not get anything like that at home. She also put extra cups of chocolate chips in her cookies because she knew that too would be an exception to their normal diet at home. She also taught them if you break the cookie in half and you dip it in milk, it becomes chocolate milk. And those kids would drink it. But the piece de resistance for Jean was sweet pickle relish added to her mother's potato salad recipe. If you put sweet pickle relish in just about anything, kids will eat it like candy. Do you want to know the recipe to get 100 kids at nap time to go to sleep at the same time? A slice of lasagna with extra cheese. Unbelievable chocolate chip cookie dipped in milk. And of course, sweet pickle relish potato salad. My mother created thousands of memories for these children. 30 years on, 
her and my father came up with a new word called retirement. They built a beautiful home in a place called Golden Valley. They built the yard that my mother had always wanted to build from scratch. They even brought transplants of purple lilacs from my grandmother's house. They traveled to places that retired people travel, and after the first year, my dad came back and said, there's way too many old people there. They still had ambition, so my mother decided to work at the food bank, but unfortunately, after a short time, she nearly was uh, let go from her volunteer job for giving away too much food because her compassion was greater than one dozen eggs a week for a family of five. My father took a job uh, driving a van in a car yard around with a whole bunch of recent immigrants. That became his new family. One of the things that makes my mother so very unique, again, is her kindness, and again, is her forgiveness, and her whole life was built on that. She, again, created a thousand memories for us. She, she was the greenest thumb in the neighborhood. She was the luckiest person you'll ever meet with a fishing pole. She had, again, the yard that she absolutely wanted her whole life, and then she forgot it all, all of it. 83 million people in the United States, according to the World Health Organization, will have this same dilemma. How many people is 83 million? It's the total population of all 13 of the western states of this country. But what does it feel like to have total memory loss? I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. I want you to imagine in the front of your brain is a whiteboard. And for just a moment, I'd like you to take out your imaginary black Sharpie and write a memory on it. Perhaps it's someone's name. And as soon as you have that in your mind, would you put your hand on your heart for me? And lean forward towards me. That's what memory loss is like. Memory loss for my mother would, it would be a thought would come into her mind and then it would disappear. Most of it forever. The hardest day of this is the day that she no longer recognized my face. But I'm on a quest to recover her memory it's really important for my family to make sure that her memory is recovered. And so I use something as a symbol, and it's this mirror. I'm out looking for my mother's reflection. I've seen it several times here today already. A lot of times I have to look hard, but most of the time I don't have to look hard at all. Next to the ketchup is the mustard and then the sweet pickle relish. Every grocery store has it. Everywhere I go, I see her. Sometimes I have to go far away to see it, and then when I'm least expecting it, it shows itself to me. Sierra Leone, I was on an education mission recently, standing in the hallway waiting for the rest of our delegation, and there was a woman next to me uh, an African woman, and I introduced myself. Her name was Rebecca. She was from Zimbabwe. She was a traveling nurse with the World Health Organization. I said, oh my gosh, why are you here? And she said, I am here to document the effects of Ebola on small children. The curiosity, George, that I am, I said, well, where were you before you were in Sierra Leone? She looked at me and looked at the floor and looked back in my eyes and she said, I was in South Sudan. Loading children on UN vans before their villages were burnt to the ground. 
She did not want me to ask the next question, but I had to because I'm just too darn curious. I said, where were you before you were in South Sudan? She put her hand up as if to say, please don't ask me that question. But she knew that I was not necessarily going to give up until she, asked, until she gave me the answer. She said, I was in Aleppo. Syria. I didn't have to ask her what she was doing there. She volunteered. She said, I was emptying the pediatric hospitals as the bombs dropped. Post Ebola in Sierra Leone, you were not supposed to hug people, but I couldn't help myself. And so, ladies and gentlemen, my mother is everywhere. And again, we, as a family, are on a mission. And I'm not the only one seeking her reflection. We found this on the, her day of remembrance. My dad found the perfect place next to the marina that they always walked in. He said, 75 guests, that's going to be perfect. A friend of mine put a notice in the local paper about my mother. My sisters were nice enough to help write the perfect remembrance of her. On the day of her remembrance, uh, people came in and they kept coming. And they kept coming. Most of them, because we had asked in that notice to bring something that reminds you of my mother, had a food item covered. They had lasagna with extra cheese. They had Toll House cookies with extra chocolate chips, and they had extra sweet pickle relish potato salad. Five minutes before the program was supposed to start, the room was full and people kept coming. All 150 extra chairs and tables needed to be used before we could start. A few months afterwards, we sought out what is that legacy that we could leave to my mother that would be the perfect thing for her? And an idea came forward from an unsuspecting place. Sulehun, eastern Sierra Leone, the middle of the jungle. This village had been praying for 10 years for a school. 60 of our friends came together and said, we will help fund it. A school was built in my mother's name. I made the long trip to Sierra Leone with the U.S. ambassador and a giant convoy. We made the long trip out into the jungle. The ceremony went on and on and on in terms of the village coming together. And then... We made the long walk out into the school site. It was the first time I had seen the building with my own two eyes. It was surrounded by a green ribbon, the blue steel doors, the yellow paint, the blue trim, just as my mom would love it. I walked out into the middle of the field because I hadn't seen a full view of it yet. And I was out on the field and a small boy three years old, followed me out. He looked at me, and our languages didn't match, but I simply said to him, my mother would like you to learn how to read. I only knew that my words had gotten through when he hugged my leg. We both walked back to the school site, and I was handed a pair of scissors a red-handled pair of school scissors. I looked down at them and my hand, these are exactly the school scissors that my mother used at starter school. I stood up next to that door and I was about to cut that ribbon. My emotions had the most of me. My, my mother's face was right in the front of my mind, but there were two kids whose images I could not forget at that time. 
little Anna and Mary. What my mother's legacy in Sulehun, Sierra Leone, represents is a chance for 200 Anna and Marys every year that get to go to school because my mother cared so much about children, little children especially. After I cut the ribbon, I didn't want to leave, but they literally had to drag me out of the village because we needed to go. We had a six-hour drive back to Freetown. But I looked out the window for as long as I could in the back until the building disappeared. That reflection of my mother, I didn't want to give up. But I did because I knew that that would, school would be well taken care of by those people who built it. I want to leave you with seven words. These are the words that I say every night before I go to sleep. If you're the kind of people that write things down, please grab your pen. It goes like this. What happened today that I'll never forget? Thank you.